ಜಗತ್ತನಾಜಯಂತವರ್ತೀರ್ಥಚಾರಜಗಮಾಜಯಂತವರ್ತೋ ನಮೋ ತೀರ್ಥನಾಯಕ so last week uh, we were not able to meet but a week before we started with the uh, tika on the um, gatha 6 so we'll recapitulate something quickly and then keep going <coughs> uh, okay one second okay so when we are talking about uh, samasa stanza 6 tika means a detailed explanation so what does amrit chandra acharya wants to say in this stanza what uh, say um kun kun swami wrote down about it so let's see okay so this is the tika in the two paragraph in this tika and the very first paragraph it just gives nature of the object it just talks about nature of the object now which object we are talking remember the object can be self or object could be alien samasar has no relationship to any alien object is always talks about self and self and self so nature of the object means it is it will be talking about nature of the eternal soul substance and what does it say there are the things in gujarati we are going in detail about it and then next paragraph it just karta karmanu ananya pano means doer and deed relationship and there is unity of doer deed relationship for example work is getting done a given work is getting done then the reason for that work reason for the deed has to be in the same substance if 
I as a soul end up doing activity of the knowing. If I end up doing activity of knowing, then the reason has to be present in me, means soul, substance only. So this is extremely, extremely important. It can't be that just because something didn't work out, that's why I became angry. So there are two substances involved now. Something didn't work out and I became angry. Phone fell down from my hand and I became angry. There are two substances involved, phone and me. No, that is not possible. It's the, the independence of this substance say that the doer and deed relationship exists only in the self. And that one, this paragraph goes in detail about it, which will be doing in a great, great, great detail as the time progresses. So <clears throat> in this commentary, what has said, what, what, what Amrit Sandracharya says, soul is established and existing due to self only. As we said, the very first time when we met, I think about close to two years back, that we just, it was, it said that uh, astitva gun, the eternal existence attribute present in the self. And because of that thing, a given soul exists by itself. So soul exists by itself. It doesn't need any help of any, any body or any physical thing or any material thing or anything. Association, of course, are there. But association are there for dissociation purpose. All this material particle got together with, my, uh, with the soul as me as a soul and a body is formed and soul is residing inside. But that's only association. They are meant for dissociation. So if I'm existing because of my body, no, that's not true. Because once I stop breathing, once my heart stops beat, beating, then the soul and body get separated. Soul still exists. Since time infinite, this soul has been residing in infinite amount of uh, physical bodies. And so it got association and then dissociation. But soul by itself exists because of its own potential power. It's an indefinite potential power sitting in the soul substance. That generator of the power keeps on making the soul keep going and going and going since time infinite in the past and for time forever in the future. So this soul will exist by itself. So there is no need for any alien objects help for its existence. Yes, I have a physical body. So I accept that there is an association. So why do I have to worry so much about my physical body, which is already a material object, which is going to disintegrate in, at the end? Definitely, I have to take care of it. And, uh, you know, uh, with the physical body, as, as I'm being a um, five, sent, five sent sentient being, yes, the existence of body is there. That's only association perspective only. I should have that kind of a, uh, um, idea in my mind. And so tomorrow, if I'm being said that you're terminal illness and you're going to live for 10 minutes, 10, 10, uh, 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 I mean, one month, two months, three months, six, I don't have to worry about it because the dissociation is going to occur with this physical body. If I have that kind of attitude, then my anxiety at the time of dissociation from this body will be nil. And that's why this Salekna thing comes in the picture, that voluntary death comes in the picture, that the, the person understands that he is coming to an end, so he voluntarily tells body that it's okay for you to get dissociated. I know I'm the eternal soul substance, and I'll go and go somewhere else. Or if I'm the, um, having the uh, self, uh, self illumination, I have the Atma Darshan, I have the right faith, I have the darshan, 
then I'll be going to the higher form of life and ultimately I'll get liberated. So this, this understanding is extremely important for me in any adverse situation, it will give me peace of mind. This eternal soul substance is pure and without any alien attachment. Well, we already said that. First two bullets are saying soul is independent, does not have any uh, uh, attachment to any uh, alien object. So eternal soul substance means pure and pure and pure. The gold particle in the uh, dust in the mind is itself pure. Gold particle in the ornament is pure. Gold particle in that uh, Canadian maple leaf gold coin is also pure. This eternal soul substance is pure, whether it's in a nigod means the lowest form of life, or it is in a human being, or it may be it will be in the Siddha Siddha Dasa liberated soul in the future. So now ignorant soul has a multiplicity multiplicity point of view. What it is, it, there is a multi, the, the Jainism is based on three important principles non-violence, non-possessiveness, and multiplicity point of view. In Gujarati, it is called uh, Ahinsa, Aparigraha, Anekan. Three A's are there. So this multiplicity point of view, ignorance self said, oh, I know that one too, because it's a wrong. What is it? What he says? What he said, from certain perspective, soul exists by self, and from other perspective, it exists due to alien attachment. For example, if I say, okay, okay, you are talking about soul, you are talking about soul, or talk, so, okay, soul exists, I do accept it. All right? But if the soul exists from certain perspective by itself, then soul also exists from other perspective due to the physical body. So this kind of thing, ignorant soul gives multiplicity point of view. Two different perspectives. Soul exists because of self, and soul also exists because of alien attachment. Now, exists by self, and exists because of alien attachment. So the two different substances are there. Remember, as we said before, and we'll repeat again today, that a multiplicity point of view is a kind of a heart of Jainism. Jainism, Jainism's building exists on the pillars of multiplicity point of view. And what is the correct multiplicity point of view? Correct multiplicity point of view as Kun Kun Swami and Amrit Chandracharya has described in Samisa means the true definition of Anekantvad true definition of multiplicity point of view. In a given substance, in a given substance, at a given time, two exact opposite things are residing. That is multiplicity point of view. Once again, in a given substance, at a given time, two exactly opposite Things are residing at a given moment. And that is a multiplicity point of view. For example, if I take example of myself, I as, I, I as a kid, Gosalia, I as a kid, then I am the uh, son of Prabhudas from one point of view, and I'm the father of Rishi Gosalia. So now, how can a son and father reside in the same substance? Because of perspective. If I'm talking from my father's perspective, then I'm son. If I'm talking from my son's perspective, then I'm father. So father and son can reside in the same substance depending on what kind of a perspective you are looking at it. So, similarly in the soul, what is multiplicity point of view in the soul? Soul is eternal in nature, soul is transitory in nature. 
two exact opposite things. Soul is eternal in nature, soul is transitory in nature from a given perspective. What's a given perspective here? Soul is eternal from substance perspective and soul is transient from modal perspective. So transiency and eternity both reside in a soul substance because what perspective you are using. So that is the right perspective. Here, ignorant one says that, okay, soul exists because of self and soul exists because of alien attachment. Two different perspectives I'm taking. Two different perspectives are okay, but you are taking two different substances here. That's why it's not a true multiplicity point of view. It's called wrong. It's a mithya anekantvad. It's a wrong multiplicity point of view. So what's a right, right multiplicity point of view? Real multiplicity point of view is soul exists due to self only and does not exist due to alien objects. Two, exact, two opposite things. Soul exists. Soul does not exist. Soul exists because of self. Soul does not exist because of alien object. So both the things, existence and non-existence occurring in the same substance. What perspective are you using? I'm using the self perspective, then soul exists. I'm taking alien objects perspective, soul does not exist. Soul does not exist in an alien object. So this is the real multiplicity point of view. This point has to be clear in our mind. This, is the, this point is exactly so much misconstrued into the Jain population at large that, oh, I, I, we, we believe in Anekantva, we believe in multiplicity point of view. So this religion is also okay. This religion is also okay. That religion is also okay. I mean, what a difference. You know, I, I want to learn everything great from everybody. So I, no, that is not right. That is a wrong perspective. You will never get liberated. I would like to have liberation. I would like to have self-experience. I would like to have a self-realization. For that thing, I have to understand the real perspective of multiplicity point of view, which is a pillar for Jainism. Jainism building exists because of the strong pillar of multiplicity point of view. If the very first thing is multiplicity point of view that it is wrong concept I have it. How can I have my, my building remain strong? It will fall down. I would like to progress further. So these are the clarity I have to have it in my mind. So we can go to the next slide. Now next one he says, soul exists forever. Soul was never originated. And will soul will never get disintegrated in future because there is a powerhouse of eternal existence sitting in the soul substance. So it remains in existence forever. Now, do I need any help for my existence on any alien objects then? I'm dependent on so many things. If I don't have paycheck, I won't have a food to eat. If I don't have a house, I don't have a roof over my head, I'll be in trouble. If I don't get water, I'll be thirsty, I'll be dead. So why we are talking something like this? Because no matter what happens, whether I have cancer or I have terminal illness or I'm extremely thirsty or hungry, yes, worst come to worst possible, that soul will dissociate from the physical body. But this soul will never stop existing. It will go from one body to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, in the transmigratory phase. And if this soul has realized this self-realization is occurring, and then he is going to be limited, transmigration will be there, and he'll get liberated soon. <clears throat> so, Soul substance is ever illuminating, nitya udyotru, means it always, nitya means forever, udyot means illuminating, means soul substance keeps on doing its work of knowing. 
knowing and knowing and knowing and knowing forever it keeps on going i'm sleeping knowledge function going on i'm awake knowledge function is going on i'm in one sense life no knowing function is going on i'm a lowest possible life nigo knowing function going on i am the um, um, five sense sentient being i'm the heavenly soul i'm the, the, the uh, 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 infernal soul i'm the plant and la uh, animal life or i am the liberated soul i will keep on knowing and knowing and knowing and knowing forever that's my middle name is knowing that's any living beings middle name is forever illuminating forever knowing um illuminating we can just go a little bit uh, uh, slightly more detail into that word this is a mirror over here a mirror here what is the function of mirror no matter what comes it just illuminates no matter what comes in front in front it illuminates the, the, there's a lamp a lamp in the room it illuminates the whole room no matter what a lamp is illuminating whole room at the same time lamp is illuminating self also for example there is a light over here in the room this light is lighting the whole room and to know this light do i need another light to to know this this first light no because this first light is illuminating whole room at the same time it illuminates self also the soul substance illuminates all the objects of the universe all the object gets illuminated in the soul soul's knowledge mode at the same time soul's knowledge mode also illuminates the soul substance also so this is illumination means and this illumination this ever illuminating thing will be talking lot more about it as our slides progress as we progress in the sixth stanza so this is what acharya bhagwan wants us to know that one has to understand what is the ever illumination means so when is ever illumination going on that means soul is not in transient in nature some philosophers believe that soul exists for one moment only soul exists momentarily and the next next soul is born and third soul and fourth soul so no this soul is never transient in nature it's there forever then all knowing virtue of the soul means agnayak bhav is having direct clear shining radiance of consciousness again this is their author our acharya bhagwan is giving little bit more idea to us about this illumination what does this illumination does what's the real nature of illumination because this is direct means this illumination doesn't need somebody's help it's clear because whatever is a soul object it just illuminates it's direct means it just does by its by itself and it's clear it's absolutely whatever is perceived it it is shown there is shining radiance of consciousness so this is consciousness consciousness means knowledge and perception consciousness is divided into two part knowledge and perception when i am attempt to attempting to know a given thing i am knowing this envelope when i am trying to know the envelope first there is going to be perception the very quick perception occurs it is so far so quick that i i i, I as a uh, transmigratory soul is unable to perceive the perception it did occur and that's it you know so now, now next phase starts this knowledge thing start for example i'm sitting right now i'm talking now i i perceive that something is there on my back maybe is it scratching going on or maybe some ant is passing by through my back i 
I just simply knew something is there. And that is perception. And, and that, that perception goes into knowledge more dry, knowledge phase right away. And now I put my attention to it and I said, mm, no, 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 no. It's not an ant or anything. I simply have a scratch. So I scratch and the scratching goes away. Now, this is kind of very rude form of example we are giving because when I perceive that I have something, something scratching type of thing going on my back, when I have that kind of feeling, already knowledge form already start. So perception already finished at the time, you know. So this is a crude, crude form of knowledge. But this, for example, in very, I mean, early morning, dusk time, I'm going for jogging. Sun is not out. It's still dark. And I see something passing in distance. That's a perception. Something happened. Now, I concentrate on it. And I said, no, it doesn't appear to be a human being walking by. But because the, it is a shorter thing, it's not a human being, but putting concentrated form, and then I said, oh, that was a dog passed by. So this is the way the knowledge occurs, perception, and then knowledge part starts. So this is what it says, the, this consciousness, this consciousness is ever shining, clear, direct radiance of consciousness. So how is my knowledge perceived? Knowledge is direct. I mean, right now, when I am talking, I'm reading the slide. I, 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 first thing I need my, first thing I need my eyes. But when I taking my glasses out, I just see something kind of hazy. I to put my glasses on and now I see clearly. So to see the screen on my computer, I need the help of my glasses and my eyes. So it becomes indirect knowledge. Knowledge has never been indirect. Yes, there is a form present in the form of eyes present over here. And that's why it becomes indirect knowledge because my knowledge mode is not that strong enough right now. It's a weak form of knowledge mode arising within me and that's why I need the help of my glasses and uh, eyes to help me know all the things. But knowledge occurs by self. Suppose somebody is totally blind. Can he not cross the road with the help of stick and everything? Yes. How did he get the knowledge? How did he know everything about it? Because if, if your eyes are not there, but knowing occurs because of self inside. So instead of using eyes, now he is using ears and everything. So he is able to use other senses to perceive the things. So over here it says, all knowing virtue of the soul, which is an eternal soul substance, is doing the activity of knowing, which is direct, clear, shining radiance, knowledge and perception so this is what we are saying there then then this soul substance is entirely separate from English of attachment this soul substance is an association of English of hello is there any question coming no Okay, there is some noise coming from uh, one of the uh, phone, I think. Okay, so this soul substance is entirely separate from influence of attachment. Now, Acharya Bhagavan is going to really, really, really take us to the microscopic level and wants to find it out. He wants us to know that how am I separate from different objects? And so he says, all different objects of the universe are there, but inclination of attachment, rag and dvesh, rag, rag and dvesh, they are occurring within me, but they are uh, alien objects. For example, I have an abscess on my hand right now, for example. That abscess is part of my body. It's 
part of my body is an abscess. But do I keep it with me? Do I just, just put a, do I do makeup on it and everything? Do I just go and put a, clean it out and just put a makeup and try to say, oh yeah, my, my abscess is very good. Let me take, no. It's occurring within me, but it is need to be taken out. Throw it out. Go to doctor, take antibiotic, do the surgery, take it out from me. I have no part of it. Similar inclusion of attachment is occurring within me, me, myself. But my, 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 this inclusion of attachment doesn't occur in this recorder. It's not, this recorder doesn't tell me that, hey, come and put your rag in me. Wait, uh, Kirit uncle, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. I thought inclination of attachment was an object outside of your soul and it's supposed to be illuminating the soul so that's why it's separate yes because soul's job is to know and to know and to know that's it knowing, so, knowing is only the soul's uh, uh, capacity to do in place of attachment is not part of the soul even though it is occurring in the soul it's Ragandesh, right? Ragandesh Ra is outside. It means it is occurring within me, but they are to be thrown out. Abscess is part of my body, but it needs to be removed. Same way, inclusion of attachment and aversion, Ragandesh are occurring within me. Remember, I am the one who did, who, who performed this inclusion of attachment and aversion in my mode. But they are alien objects for me because they are not part of my eternal true nature. So I need to throw them out. So you're saying Ragandesh is part of the soul, but not part of the eternal true nature of the soul? Yeah. Say, remember, see. Multiplicity point of view. Yeah. So is that the multiplicity point of view that Ragandesh is of part of your soul, but it's not the part you want in its perspective? See, right now, you talk it to that. You talk is that it to right? You're putting that uh, uh, perspective that on account of right into it. Yeah, go ahead. You on go ahead. Oh, uh, no, uh, hello, can you hear me? Here, Uncle, it's Shia and Uncle. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, good. Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 so, so I think what Priti is saying, I don't know, maybe Priti, if you don't mind me rephrasing what you're saying. So, in the case of the abscess, you want to remove the abscess. But in, in, in the analogy with the non bariai being a, a mirror, everything is reflected in the mirror. Even rag and dish are reflected in the mirror. But the point is, in the mirror is also reflected our, 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 our eternal uh, true nature. And so, so we should look in that, in that mirror of where everything is reflected, we should shift our attention to the part is ourselves. I, I think I don't know, maybe that helps. I think what, 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 what Preeti's point is, she is trying to put the principle of multiplicity of point of view in this influence of attachment, saying that occurs within me, so it occurs, so it's mine, but it doesn't, I, I don't want to keep it with me, so I want to throw them out. So it's the same influence of attachment looking from Pariyaya Peksha from looking from modal aspect, yes, it is mine. But from soul's eternal true nature, it's not mine. Mine and not mine, both are occurring in the same soul substance. And that's why this inclusion of substance is entirely separate from soul substance, is from the multiplicity point of view. And then what Chirag, you are saying, that you are saying that the, the, the mirror, means the, uh, the mode of the knowledge is like a mirror. It reflects everything. It reflects all the things of the universe. It reflects all the universal things. Plus, it also reflects the eternal true nature of the soul. So it reflects everything. Where do I want to put my attention to? Do I want to have attention on the alien object? Or do I want to have attach, uh, attention to my eternal true nature? So that is the that is a job that I have to I have to do it is to put everybody as secondary 
and I just want to look. For example, I'm driving from New York all the way to uh, uh, Florida. I'm on 95 South. What do I look? You know, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of signs they come. Exit for this and exit for that and New Jersey exit and uh, 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 Maryland exit and now North. I, I, I see them. In my knowledge perspective, they are illuminating, but I don't pay attention. Only attention I pay put when they say Florida is 300 miles, 200 miles, 100 miles, 50 miles. Those are only the thing I keep on looking. So I already do what is, I already do in my routine life, what is important for me, what is not important for me. If I'm looking for a job as a physician right now, so if I open the New York Times, will I look for the job sections of the uh, 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 janitors and everything? No, I'll, I'll bypass those things because that's not my cup of tea. I won't look for the jobs opening into the um, IT, IT industry. I'll just look for the job in the medical industry. So here, a whole thing is there. But where, where do I want to put them, my attention to? So this one uh, over here also, English of attachment, I want to discard. I want to give least important to it, even though it occurs within me. Does it make sense, Priti? Wait, um, um, Uncle, I understand all that you said, but the, la the back to my original question. Yeah. And Ankit, I understand what you're saying, but... Chirag. If the, Chirag, I mean, soul is separate. So then inclination of attachment is happening within me. So it, either it's multiple, multiplicity point of view or it's Ragandwish is an outside point. That's what I'm not getting. So am I right that it's a multiplicity point of view? You are right. But, but remember, when we are, the, the Ragandwish are occurring in the soul, in the soul. In the, uh, in the in the schema of the soul, right, which are occurring, right, right. Now, where do I want to put my attention to? That's fine. That's I understand that part. So my uh, my attention has to be directed to my eternal soul substance. In my I have to know the increase of attachment is with me, but I don't have to. I have to give secondary importance to that. You know. So is the raga and dish, like when the soul knows itself, right? The soul is illuminated from the outside and the soul knows itself. So both things are happening. So is inclination of attachment no. part of the soul knowing itself also? Or is that strictly outside? See, there's no outside thing. Everything is happening within this. Within. Oh. Now, the... the Lamp is illuminating the whole room at the right. same time, lamp is illuminating self also. The soul substance illuminates the whole entire alien objects plus soul also and uh, um, uh, illuminates the eternal soul substance also. So it's a mode of the soul substance where the actions are occurring number one remember the actions are occurring in the mode of the soul substance so actions are there what are the actions to know the all entire whole universe and also this mode 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 also knows the soul its substance which is an eternal soul substance with infinite attributes so it also knows that one so it knows that one and knows our outside thing. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I got it. Um, and thank you, Chirag, for helping too. I appreciate it. Okay, that's very good. Okay. All right. Okay. So now let's go further. So present impurity seen in transmigratory soul is in the mode and is present since time infinite in the past. Remember, we are talking transmigratory soul right now. We are not talking the, the pure, liberated Siddha soul. We are talking about transmigratory soul. And that transmigratory soul has a mode. A given substance, a given soul has a mode. Similarly, 
a transmigratory soul also has a mode but when i say transmigratory means the suffering soul means this soul has not realized its all potential means this soul is having only modal perspective that means this transmigratory soul is bringing attention always to the alien objects of the world so because this soul transmigratory soul has kept its attention to the alien objects of the world that's why this transmigratory soul has an impurity within and because of that impurity this transmigratory soul will keeps on uh, transmigrating in a different realms of existence from human he will go to the uh, infernal being from there he'll become he'll go to the uh, plant and animal life he may go to uh, celestial life and he keeps on rotating in this transmigration forever and ever and ever because of his own fault nobody asked him to do it but because of his own nature that he is directing attention to the alien objects he has a choice he has a choice to look within also the the as as, as chirag rightly say that this mode this mode of a knowledge mode occurring right now within me has a it has a two illumination one illumination of the eternal all the objects of the universe at the same time it also illuminates the eternal soul substance within the lamp is illuminating whole room lamp is illuminating self so because of those things two two parts of illuminations are occurring in a given soul substance but as a transmigratory soul i bring the attention to only alien objects of the universe that's why i like these things and i don't like it this is mine you don't ever touch this one so this kind of things that i just do the uh, um, my my unity with the uh, uh, alien object and that's a reason for me to be in transmigratory state <clears throat> Can I share sort of my what I've developed in my mind as the narrative of what's happening here, and then you can please uh, uh, correct it. Yeah. So when let's take an example, like when we get angry. So when we get angry, I what I see is three different substances, all having saha uh, bhavi panu is is the word, but three three of them are happening simultaneously in three different substances. So the first one is dravya karma. So that one comes to fruition so that happens and that gets reflected in the gnan uh, pariyai mirror the next thing is that simultaneously in our body things happen which is also a dravya substance it's different from dravya karma so uh, heart heartbeat goes up like you have like changes in blood pressure and like um you know breathing so all that is happening simultaneously and the third dravya is the atma and in there um all of the the first two are being reflected in the non pariyai and and that one is also having bhav uh, karma i think like you know like mental um i don't know i guess uh, you know <laughs> mental is pudgal you know the mental that goes is the pudgal it goes in the second category of the body with the uh, heartbeat and everything <laughs> but the atma dravya also has pudgal so you can please clarify this okay. so what you are saying is what happens when a person becomes angry let let's that's a real life example we are taking and few things are happening that actually there is a fruition of the old material karma comes in existence material karma remember material karma which are part of my soul they reside in the same space point of my soul that this material karma comes in the form of fruition till now they were in dormant state remaining in the same space point as my soul now this dormancy comes in fruition phase 
And so what does this material karma, fruition of this material karma do to me? They just create the situation for me. They create the situation for me. And now, for example, that my kid took the car last night and he came back and he had he just kept the car on an empty gas. When I'm trying to get ready, some some uh, some some problem occurred, and my shirt is not ironed, and uh, I'm becoming a little bit angry, a little bit nervous about it. And in that kind of thing, suddenly my tea falls down on my shirt, and now I blow out. I blow out, you know. So what is happening? All the situations were ready for me to get blow out. But to get into the anger state or to remain in the equanimity phase was my own choice. The situation is there. There is all negative situations are there in front of me. And now I became angry. So I, I as a soul, soul became angry. So material karma are called dravya karma. They are matter. They are non-living in nature. They don't have any brain or anything. They simply came in a fruition. That's it. They just give a situation to me and then they disappear. They got dissociated from me. Now at the same time when the situation was there, me as a soul got attached to that material karma and I became angry. Who became angry? I became angry. Soul became angry. So that soul becoming angry is called bhav karma. It's called psychic karma. The fruition was material karma. They are non-living in nature. They just give the situation and that's it. This, uh, my attitude become anger attitude. And that is called bhav karma, psychic karma. The so psychic karma means my own attitude changing. Who is the nimit? Who is the uh, 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 secondary, I mean, uh, auxiliary cause here? The material karma's fruition is an auxiliary cause. And I become angry. That is my psychic karma, which is my principal cause. So principal cause, auxiliary cause, relationship is seen. And that's why I say, just because of this thing, I became angry. But remember, we just said previous slide, two things, it, it is, the, the action cannot occur because of two things. Action occurs because of my weakness only, or my strength only. If I decided to remain in equanimity phase, then I won't become angry, even though, all the situation was created by material karma. So here two guys are there. The, the material karma created situation and then bodily situation occurred and all the thing, all the material all the material problem occurred in front of me. But those are not important. Material karma fruition came. That is the fruition. And that is the auxiliary cause. I became angry. That is my principal cause. So there is a relationship it is seen, principal cause, auxiliary cause relationship. And that's why I just believe that because of this thing, because of my material karma fruition, I become angry. That's not true. To become angry or not to become angry is my own direct attitude. I can remain that quiet also at the time. I can remain in one into phase also at that time. So basically two substances are involved here, you know. The third substance are secondary in nature, body, you know, heart, heartbeat going up, and I start shivering. My, my, my words are coming out in a uh, broken sentence. Eyes become red and everything. Those are the secondary things. Primary actions occur because of me getting attached to the fruition of the old karma coming in existence. I have a, I, the trigger is on my hand. It's in my capacity to become angry or not to become angry, to remain in equanimity. All those things are within me. So I should do that part. So here, coming back to on this situation, what happens? 
present impurity is seen, I become angry. That is because of me as a transmigratory soul that I, I keep my modal perspective. And the modal perspective means my attention was drawn to the alien objects. That's modal perspective also. So modal perspective or attention drawn to the alien objects. And because of that thing, I remain in a transmigratory space forever. Right? So here we are. We can go to the next one. Uh, oh. In the transmigrated state, since time infinite, there is a bondage of karma. We, we, I think we already discussed this slide in uh, Chirag's discussion and everything, but we'll just go quickly. In transmigrated state, since time infinite, this bondage of material karma means I become, let's say that I was angry yesterday. That means I invited material karma, so they came and they stayed in the same space point as my soul. They did not take any extra space. As soul has an uh, innumerable space point, so in those space point, the material karma particle also started residing. And they remain in my, uh, in my soul space point in the dormancy phase. Once again, yesterday I was angry, so material karma came and got stuck to me, and this sticking of the material karma remained on the same space point as my soul. They remain in dormancy. This material karma comes into fruition in the later stage, let's see. Uh, so material karma and the soul's area occupy the same space point. Now, one minute, one will say, this is kind of things which, which we don't understand. What is this uh, same space point thing? Imagine, there is a room right now. This room has a one light right now, for example. Will the light illuminate the whole room or not? Answer is yes. There are two lights, two light bulbs. Will they illuminate the whole room? Yes. The million light bulbs are there. Will they illuminate the whole room? Yes. So now, now let's imagine that this, this, this million lights, they have million colors. Red, green, blue, magenta, whatever, whatever million colors are there. And all those light bulbs are lighted up right now. Will all those colored light will occupy the same room, the same space point in the room or not? Answer is yes. Suppose out of all those illumination, I take the red bulb out, what will happen? From the whole room, the, the lighting perspective, the red light goes out. Instead of red light, I add yellow light. The yellow will occupy the same space point. Or if I take one, two, three, four, five lights out, then those light color will be out. I add another one, those same new colors will be added, will be in the same, same space point as the room. So this room can occupy any amount of uh, light particles. Similarly, a uh, soul space point can occupy any amount of material karma particle without becoming fat or without becoming too congested, nothing. So this soul, this soul has accepted infinite amount of material particle in the past. And now they, time to time they come in fruition. They come in fruition and then they disappear. The new karma particle gets bonded they all can occupy the same space point. There is no problem. So this is, this is the point that we have to understand. Then when one looks from modal perspective, then the material karma and soul's impure modal state appear to have oneness, just like water and milk mixed together. When I'm looking from modal perspective only, modal perspective tells me that yeah, they both appear to be same. If I take the light bulb's perspective, 
different colors of light will appear to be residing in the same space point. It appears as if they are one, as if they are all one. But when I just look into it, they are not one. They are separate. But I'm just looking. There is a prism here. There's a prism and I throw the white light. White light. On the other side of the prism, seven color comes out. That means in the white light, it appears all seven colors are residing as a oneness nature. But when it passes through prism, they just show the true color and they, they show the seven colors. So, when, when I'm looking at the white light before entering prism, then it appears to be oneness. All the colors are in oneness nature, in unity. So that is called modal perspective. But when I'm looking for the same, same thing, same white light passing through the prism, and I look on the other side, they all are seven different lights are there, seven different colors are there. So these seven different colors, consider them as a substantial perspective. White light, consider them as a modal perspective. Why? Because in the white light, I see that it's a pure white light only. I don't see all seven substances separate. When it passes through the prism, all those things are been separated out. So, when I'm hey, had Duncan, to, yeah. can, can I ask you a question yeah. about this? Yeah. So this may be inappropriate. We, you're going to just say it, it's not in the subject matter. But light in general is based in physics. It has a wave and a physical part. So I think you're saying that karma and soul is also having the same physical properties. It can have the wave nature and the physical part also, or is that what you're saying? Well, you know, see, we, we don't want to, we, see, the, the example we try to use is to convey the real point. So we don't, we, see, if we dissect those kind of example detail, what if, so for example, oh, okay. for example, if I say that uh, um, uh, Mahaviswami in Marichi's life, he became arrogant. Suppose he didn't become arrogant. So what would have happened? Why do you worry about it? This example, from that example, we are trying to say that arrogancy is not the nature of the soul. Arrogancy will give the bad fruition to you in the future. So that's a take home message we are giving. Now, what happens to Marichi? I, I don't worry about it. I, I, am, okay, I was not there. Why do you worry? So the, the <coughs> wavelength and all the things, we don't want to dissect the example. What we are trying to say, they all occupy the same space. Form. All the seven color of the rainbow occupies the white, white, white in, the, in the white light. That's a exam, That's a point. That, that that's a take home point for us right now. So what we are saying when we look at the substantial perspective, karma and soul's activity appears to be separate. When I look from modal perspective, it appears they both are same. For example. I become angry because somebody really made my life miserable today. So somebody made my life miserable, I become angry, but I make that one as one event only. Because of him, I became, because of him, I become uh, upset. Because of him, my life became miserable. So I become, I bring two substances together and that is called modal perspective. It appears to be the same. But now I start analyzing, sitting quietly at home, and I just say, so what difference does it make? <clears throat> the guy in front of me is driving at 55 miles per hour. Old man, like me. Now, I want to go to work, and I'm late. So I just said, oh, God, those buddhiyas, you know, they should not be, they should be th thrown out of the road and everything. They make my life miserable. They, he did not do anything wrong. <clears throat> He's obeying all the principle of the road. <clears throat> and I become angry. So I, I connect myself with him. That's a modal perspective. 
mean, I'm sitting down quietly in the evening. I said, what's wrong with that guy? He was driving normally. I was in rush, so it's my problem. So now I separate those things. That becomes substantial perspective. <clears throat> so this is what I think you have to just understand. What is a substantial perspective? When you find it out that two separate events, you decide and you dissect them, you separate them out, that's called substantial perspective. That's called Ved Gnan. That's called differential, uh, no, differentiation knowledge. So my knowledge perspective, I make my knowledge so sharp that I divide what is not me, what is my real nature. And that is the whole aim and idea for this uh, sixth uh, uh, stanza. Uh, we have time, almost time is there. Let's try to see if we can finish one more slide. All knowing virtue of the eternal soul substance means Gnayak Bao means eternal soul substance is in indivisible form. Eternal soul substance has no division. When you try to make division, it is, it is called in multiple form, multi-form, but it is not in multi-form, it's uniform. It is in one form only. One form and one form and one form is soul, is a soul, is a soul, is a soul forever and ever and ever. Gold is a gold, is a gold in the mind and in the ornaments and in the uh, bank locker and all the things. So gold remains as a gold, soul remains as a soul, so soul can never be in the multi-form. How does it go in multi-form though? What happens? Auspices and you know, inauspicious inclusion of the soul are the reason for bondage of material karma. What we just said, I had the inclusion of attachment and aversion. I had the auspicious inclination, I had inauspicious inclination, that become reason for material karma bondage. Now, this auspicious, inauspicious inclinations are multi-form. I like this, I don't like this, I really love this one, I really hate this one. So all those things are called multi-form. These inclinations do not have consciousness within and therefore considers non-living in nature. Auspicious inclination, punya bhav, Inauspicious inclination, pap bow, inclination of attachment, rag bow, inclination of aversion, dvesh bow, anger, deceit, ego, greed, all those things, they don't have consciousness. They are simply there in multi form, they don't have consciousness. Who has a consciousness? All living virtue of the eternal soul substance has consciousness within. Me as a soul substance has a consciousness within. And therefore, me as a unique of indivisible form as a soul substance and multi-form of auspices, inauspicious inclinations are two entirely separate entities. Remember, Acharya Bhagwan wants to do the Ved Vignan. He wants to do differentiation, this differentiation of the alien objects and me as eternal source of substance. I have to do it. How do I do it? First, I have to know who am I. For a second thing, I have to know who are the alien objects like this. Once I know them, then I have to take them out. And so those are the things that we'll be talking today. Any other questions, if you have, we can just entertain even in the next couple of minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem. Okay. Now we'll send it out, okay? Okay. If there is no question, then we can possibly oh, end it over here. Okay. Okay. Javani ke jan se suje lo kalo so vani mastaka namo sada deta hita No ban namo kamo No Okay, okay. Okay,
जय जय एवरीबॉडी यू नो नेक्स्ट वीक बिकॉज ऑफ द पोल्यूशन आई थिंक वी विल हैव टू पोस्टपोन नेक्स्ट वीक एंड वीक आफ्टर ऑल्सो इज गोइंग विद द so we'll have to postpone so we'll have to have two sessions we'll be postponing and then uh, we'll meet afterwards okay okay sounds good i'm sorry avti kal no she ne ha avti kal no she yeah avti kal no avti kal pa we'll have to postpone because uh, um,